Welcome to Biochemistry. Biochemistry, I will be explaining all the biochemistry that is necessary for FPGE purpose and this is basic basic subject uh, that is uh, necessary not only to discuss the metabolism uh, but uh, that is not normally happening in the body but also the metabolism of drugs. This forms the basis, right? So let's start. Biochemistry, as you all know that biochemistry is a branch of science, right? And it deals with two things. Number one, biological molecules and number two, biological processes. A biology, what are those biological molecules? Let's see. You all are very much familiar. Uh, these are the carbohydrates, proteins, lipids, nucleic acids, vitamins, hormones, enzymes and minerals. Out of these biomolecules, the most important are the four. These are the major biomolecules. These are the carbohydrates, proteins, lipids, and nucleic acids. And nucleic acids are very much important because they are dealt with in a separate branch of biochemistry, and that is called genetics. Right? So we reserve it here. So let's talk about these three major biomolecules that are important for energy purposes. These are the three things that give us energy carbohydrates, proteins, lipids. And now we come to the biological processes. All the biological processes that are happening in the living organisms or in the human being are collectively termed as metabolism. Now metabolism can further be classified into two categories, catabolism and anabolism. Catabolism is the breaking down of the larger molecules into smaller molecules, while anabolism is the combining of smaller molecules to make larger molecules. So let's discuss what is this, this page. This page is really very important to understand. And uh, this makes the basis of energy metabolism. And I call it the big picture. Unless you know this big picture, you are not going to grasp the whole concept of biochemistry. So this is really very important to spend some time over this page. And this is overview of energy metabolism. I mean, what is all about energy? How do we get energy from the food that we eat, right? Overview of energy metabolism. So we eat in our diet all those pizzas, burgers, pastas, meat, fruits, vegetable, milk, all that thing. All that thing is essentially made up of carbohydrates, proteins, and fats. Right? Fats can also be called um, lipids. Right? Because a lipid is a bigger term, while the fat is a smaller term. That is also called triacyl glycerol. We'll discuss that. So the first stage, at the first stage that food that we eat is digested. The first stage is digestion. And in the digestion, uh, which is also called hydrolysis, uh, the food is hydrolyzed. The food is hydrolyzed to make the monomers. The carbohydrates are broken down into glucose. Uh, the major carbohydrate that is present in our diet is a starch. Right? That is there in the bread, that is there in the major food I mean, that, that we eat and the pizzas, burgers, all those things contain starch. And the starch makes glucose on hydrolysis. And similarly, proteins are digested to make amino acids. And fat is digested to make fatty acids. Right? And the lipids that we eat can also make cholesterol. Cholesterol, right? So the first stage of energy metabolism is that that food that we have eaten that must have to be hydrolyzed to make monomers that are absorbable in the small intestine. So after the monomers are formed, these monomers are absorbed into the blood and in the blood, uh, from the blood they go to the cells. So now just uh, an important point, the only the water soluble things directly get into the blood, this is the minocytes and glucose. Uh, we can get also galactose from lactose and we can also get fructose from sucrose that we eat, right? But the fats cannot directly, or fatty acids and cholesterol, they cannot directly go into the blood. So first they go into the lacteals. They go into the lacteals and lacteals are the small, are the those capillaries, small capillaries uh, of the lymphatic system. And once these things are in the lacteals, fatty acids and cholesterol, in the lacteals there are proteins. There are proteins. 
right the apoproteins we will discuss further and now this lipid this lipid thing fatty acid cholesterol and protein make lipoproteins and the dietary lipoproteins are called chylomicrons okay fine but ultimately these chylomicrons uh, enter into the blood and from the blood they enter into the cells right fine but in the second stage what happens to this these monomers in the second stage the second stage is called the formation of acetyl coa the second stage is called the formation of acetyl coa glucose makes pyruvate and pyruvate is converted into acetyl coa and similarly amino acids are converted into acetyl coa but amino acids can also take another route that first pyruvate and then into acetyl coa and similarly fatty acids are oxidized to acetyl coa so all the food actually is making acetyl coa acetyl coa is very important and now this acetyl coa enters into the tca cycle the tca cycle is also called citric acid cycle or or krebs cycle tca stands for tricarboxylic acid cycle now what happens acetyl coa acetyl coa is oxidized to carbon dioxide i'm using the word oxidized this is really very important acetyl coa is oxidized to carbon dioxide when acetyl coa is oxidized to carbon dioxide something is reduced and what is that something that something is nad fad fad and nad are reduced to fadh and nadh so these reduced substrates are formed in the krebs cycle they are also formed in glycolysis and in the link reaction we will study that further but the the bigger concept is that acetyl coa is oxidized to carbon dioxide and in that process fad and nad are reduced to nadh and fadh2 so the product of tca cycle are carbon dioxide and nadh and fadh2 these reduced substrates then enter into the electron transport chain and they are oxidized and once they are oxidized energy is produced in the form of atp energy is produced in the form of atp and oxygen is reduced to water right you see that oxidation and reduction takes place simultaneously that is why they are called redox reactions so if i sum this up this becomes like food first of all is digested and makes monomer those monomers are converted into acetyl coa and then acetyl coa in krebs cycle makes carbon dioxide and reduced substrate and those reduced substrates go into the electron transport chain to make a t p right so this is the whole process and from here to here we can say that the food is oxidized the food is oxidized to carbon dioxide and in that process of oxidation we got atp while the first process is essentially hydrolysis or digestion so now you know that this is the big picture the food all the food that we have eaten uh, that has been digested first and then after digestion that is absorbed into the blood in case of uh, carbohydrates and proteins directly absorb into the blood and from the uh, from here it goes to the liver through portal circulation while in case of fatty acids and the cholesterol or all the grease that we take in that is first uh, uh, funnels into the lymphatic system and from the lymphatic system it makes chylomicrons and that those chylomicrons go to the blood and from the blood they enter into the cells like other nutrients and then once inside the cells they are converted into acetyl coa and acetyl coa makes enters into the krebs cycle to make carbon dioxide nadh fads2 and those NADH and FADH2 are oxidized in the electron transport chain to produce ATP and when they are oxidized oxygen is reduced to water so this is the big picture so how this is going to apply in the real scenario